For <clears throat> thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me and crushed me, and he's made an empty vessel. He swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. The violence is done to me, and my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitant of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chalda, Chaldea, shall, shall Jerusalem say, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry, and Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, and astonishment, and a hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions and, and yell as, as lions whelps. In their heat I will make uh, their feasts, and I will make them drunken, and they may rejoice in a and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with the goats. How is Sheshach taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea has come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, and land therein where no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in the Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, you go out in the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord." And lest your heart faint, and you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Jeremiah 51, some verses. turning to the fierceness of the wrath of God. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the inhabitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through her abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you not be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double how much she's glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and therefore shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judges her and the king of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and thyme wood and all manners of uh, vessels of ivory and all manners of most precious wood and brass and iron and, and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine oil and fine flour and wheat and bread and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men. And the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly 
are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off in the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, Last, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches have come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many trade on the sea stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust in their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city wherein were made rich by all that had the ships and the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, for you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it in the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters and shall be heard no more in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by sorceries were their nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Da -da. And that is why in Jeremiah 51, a lot of people that think this has to do with the USA um, like in Jeremiah 51 to the destruction of Babylon in Revelation 18. So I thought I would just read the two because uh, that seems to be in the consciousness right now of people and it's in the consciousness of people with regard to World War III. And, you know, whether you take Babylon as a certain city like Washington, D.C., which certainly with all the uh, pentagrams and um, obelisks and gargoyles and, and uh, um, spiritualism and um, uh, secret societies and masonry and all the different uh, Luciferian agencies that are represented in the architecture and art of Washington, D.C., including statues like the Baphomet pose of Washington and various others, you could make a conclusion, but then you could also go to the Louvre in Pelly, and you could look at that and see the, um, all the symbolism there. You could go to the Knesset in Israel, and you can see all the symbolism there, and a lot of people have. You can go to just about anywhere in Europe, um, you know, especially the Catholic churches, and you can see symbolism of gargoyles, pentagrams, serpents, and the like throughout all the architecture, uh, pretty much everywhere, you know, laced in where they thought the people of the day wouldn't, you know, they just figured people wouldn't, their eyes weren't open there, the unwashed masses, and they wouldn't understand what they were saying. They were saying, our, we are beholden to Lucifer, to Satan, the great dragon, though we be a church of Jesus Christ. And that's the message of the architecture. It doesn't mean there aren't, you know, Catholics and other denominations who are sincere believers. It just means that, um, you know, I just was pondering the last 24 hours about how people could just sit there and say, well, I'm not going to do anything because it's all corrupt. It sucks. And so therefore, I'm just going to sit here and wait to be picked up by Jesus. People usually get on to the whole Alex Jones thing and they become totally disillusioned with everything. And then um, they can't they're not going to vote because it's the left-right Hegelian paradigm. There is no good guy in the, in the battle. We're just here stranded refugees. Lord, please come quickly and pick us up now. And um, the only thing wrong with that, because I lived like that myself for quite a few years, and I'm not talking about something, you know, judging another person or condemning anyone for anything. I'm, all I'm doing is saying, I was pondering this, you know, when your eyes are open and you see all the evil and you get to the point where you just go, well, you know, it's so bad that I'm just going to sit here on the side of the road. You know, I'm going to preach the gospel. And when you preach the gospel, you're talking about all these struggles of different armies and kings and wars. And, um, you know, I'm going to preach the gospel and uh, do the great work of the Great Commission. You know, believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. 
and send that out across the land. And that's really, that would be fine, but that's not really what's going on. Instead of getting involved in, say, a political struggle, a war struggle, a financial struggle, a struggle to, you know, make things right, to, you know, pray to the Lord. You know, in other words, I'm going to separate myself out from everything going on here and just kind of talk about Jesus. And the problem is, is that, but God, Yahweh, Jesus, Yeshua is not separate from politics, even religion, war, education, um, and all the problems that are be you know troubling man at the moment. And there's many people who are. I mean, and then the human you say as well. You know, this is Babylon, and so therefore, you know. Um, it's okay to not participate. I'm in Babylon. Uh, what do you expect? You know, it's Babylon. And, you know, and the, me of all people should be talking about this because here's a guy, me, for example, the, uh, you know, looking at it in the abstract, uh, a person who was basically separate from the whole system for pretty much just due to trauma and, um, you know, through no fault of my own, I mean, you know, unless children are responsible for abusing themselves or whatever, you know, not through any fault of my own, but just by circumstance. Uh, and now I liken that to have been, you know, that the Lord was preserving me to, 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 to be a, a vessel of his word. So here I am, a vessel of the Lord's word and have the credentials the spiritual credentials of, say, a, a, even a John the Baptist or something. I'm, no, I'm not saying I'm as good and as, as completely, you know, I'm pretty much veiled. I'm kind of hidden in a way, you know, um, not so visible. But, in, but the same, you know, position as an Elijah or John the Baptist or anyone like that or Ezekiel or whatever or Jeremiah or any of those, you know, the same position of being like, for example, they would embrace and want to hear something I had to say and then they would reject with vehemence and then embrace again and then try to kill me and then want me again and then try to kill, you know, there's been that back and forth, same thing Jeremiah went through. And um, I went through this kind of like without God's purpose. I mean, I went through this in kind of like a mystified way. But in terms of having the actual credentials of the spirit, um, you know, since childhood I've had them. <laughs> there's been no I was in and now I'm out <laughs> I was lost and then found I was deluded and then came to clarity I was in the lie and then came to the truth I, I was, but I was at odds with the world situation and, and with the satanic um, junta which um, tends to you know kill people and break things uh, wherever they find anything that doesn't conform so uh, definitely went to war, not to war against that, I've just, you know, it was at war, it's at war with anyone that is not the same. And the odd thing about that is, is none of us is the same. And in the end, everyone who is of God must be separate because you can see what's going to happen to, say, the lukewarm church. They will go down with the ship and be um, cannon fodder as Babylon goes. Now, let's get back to the scripture. Let's not, the only reason I me mentioned me is me of all people talking about, say, participating in the system. <laughs> when, uh, you know, I've been a derelict from the system for a long time, you know, for my, for my life. And, and I didn't even realize there was a system. You know, I mean, I was trying, I was, you know, a multiple, you know, I had all kinds of altars and, and all kinds of, um, you know, I was a, a, a basket case, if you will, according to the world. But now, apparently, it looks like I was, like Yahweh took pretty, pretty good care of me. You know what I'm saying? All those things had to happen. I mean, I'm still hurting from the pain 
And I think the Lord is, is teaching me that, well, we're all going to die anyway, so embrace the pain. I now see the pain as, you know, part of the process of being alive. Like if I didn't have the pain, I wouldn't be alive kind of thing. You know, I'm not, no, I'm not saying become a masochist. I'm just saying if I didn't have the pain, I wouldn't be alive. So come to just at least try to appreciate it when it's on. Like it was on yesterday, pretty bad. And it's been on a lot of times when I wanted to speak with, uh, you know, when I wanted to preach the word and then the pain just was too much and I just couldn't do it. Pain meaning... I hurt, pain meaning I can't gather my thoughts because the pain is hurting, pain meaning traumas from the past, um, keeping, you know, creating downtime for me. And then, you know, kind of rising above it in the spirit. But as the world, you know, and, and here's the good news about it, as, and I know I'm talking to somebody, as the world is kind of devolving, and breaking and falling and failing, people of the system look like idiots. I mean, you know, there's just no question that they would envy you who walk with the Lord. Now, as for people that say they're walking with the Lord but are still in the system, when I say in the system, I mean spiritual connection. I don't mean um, going to do a job where there's all kinds of Babylonian things going on. I don't mean um, going to rock concerts. I don't mean... Um, going to the post office. I don't mean voting. I don't mean serving the military. I don't mean serving in the corporation. I don't mean serving in politics. That is not what I mean by being in the system. What I mean by being in the system is the ancient witchcraft, which they don't call that, but the ancient, you know, um, uh, the, the, the thing run by the queen, the, you know, Whatever, I'm talking about the world. And, um, and people say, well, but you've got to be connected to the earth. And I'm like, no, I'm really more of a sky person. I'm connected to the earth in the sense that I'm an, I have elements and the earth is elements, so we're connected. I'm connected to the earth in those ways. What I mean <clears throat> being part of the system I mean that, I mean being asleep in the matrix. I mean that you have never really been awakened and that you've never come out of her and been separate. And a foreign entity of parasites has been feeding off you the whole time in exchange for giving you something they call a life, which really isn't a life, but you think it's a life. And you live it saying, boy, I'm sure glad I made that decision to be part of the system, to go through that fire and come out the other side because, wow, it's really better over here. And the answer to that is, no, it's not better. You, you have allowed yourself to be fed upon to feed the dragon in exchange for, quote, the world, which as, you know, eventually starts breaking down on you and your own body breaks down on you, and the whole thing becomes a sham and doesn't live up to what you thought you were going to get when you sold out. Now, there's that part of it, but then there's the other part of it that's more subtle, which is you're part of the system <clears throat> from birth unless, you have a, unless you've been twice born. So to the people that are not twice born, they automatically, by default, are part of the system. People whose eyes are not open are simply there Maybe they haven't made a deal with the devil, but they're still part of the system in the sense that the system's feeding on them to breed its own parasitical uh, nature. It gets to a certain point like a tick and then God just pulls it off or destroys it. And I know that from a lot of, you know, and I'm just here to tell you, there is no future in the system. The system of souls, the spiritual system of Babylon, there is no future in it. Now, you can be, uh, um, you know, someone begging for crumbs and be part of the system, or you can be um, fabulously rich and not part of the system. It's got nothing to... What are you doing? Huh? What do you have over there? I'll have to 
pause this. Okay, I think we're resuming here. Yeah, my cat, Nazarena, she's got a, uh, a mouse and she won't let me have it. So she grabs it, lets it go for a little bit, and then she runs after it. And she's kind of an old cat, and that's a lot of spunkiness on her part. I'm happy to see it. So there's kind of a lift, and then when there's a lift, I talk to you. But when I'm talking about the system, and here's the confusion of Babylon, because Babylon is the system. It's a code word for this in the Bible. Babylon is meaning the global world economic uh, system, the, the new world order, if you like, or the order of David Rockefeller, or the order of um, the Rothschilds, or whatever you want to say about um, what it is, because it's not strictly physical. Remember the line in the book of Revelation that says, for by their sorceries, all the nations were deceived. All these people that run the, the world and the political systems of the earth are into sorcery and witchcraft. And that's the system. When you know, they set up universities to give you a degree, and basically you're jumping through their hoops of sorcery. Now, this is, I'm speaking in spiritual terms here, not, you know, physical terms. Um, they like to pass themselves off as atheists publicly, but privately they are, you know, blood-drinking Satanists. I mean, that's all I can say they are, because that's really what it comes down to in the end, of doing the opposite of what is good. In other words, doing evil, and then trying to cover it up, meaning they do evil deeds, you know, wars, rumors of wars, economic trouble, causing people starvation, and that becomes like a big satanic ritual to boost their power and to make people dependent on them for more power. And it's just really a parasite. What it is is Satanism is just like a parasitical tick that just keeps drinking, drinking, drinking blood until it finally pops or it's finally dealt with. And um, there's nothing good that comes out of it. If you were to see the nation of, of America and Europe and uh, you know, the rest of the earth <clears throat> destroyed a nuclear holocaust. There'd be very little that you could say is good. Like you, you look around and go, boy, there's the hall of, the sports hall of fame, the football hall of fame. Boy, those are really great people there. I mean, you wouldn't say that. It'd be, just be like, it'd all be abstract to you. You'd look for something good in the society and you wouldn't find it. Right? Because it failed. So, all the entertainment, all the, the things that were built, all the museums, all the you know, cultural icons, both human and inanimate, all the things that went to make up this culture of the world today would be considered stupid, irrelevant, idiotic, cartoonish. Even the most sophisticated sciences would be looked at as cartoonish. Einstein would be looked at as a... As a uh, you know, some sort of uh, joker. You know, no, no, nothing would be taken seriously. It'd be like, oh, they were really stupid back then, but we're really smart now, something to that effect. In, in other words, it would not be respected. Babylon ru in ruination would not be respected, would not be looked at as, oh, we got to collect this because, boy, they really had it going on then, we want to copy that. No. People wouldn't copy it. They would be disgusted by it. A giant tick that, that simply needs to be swatted, you know, pulled off the host and then killed. And the blood splatters everywhere. I mean, basically, that's what you're looking at. Because, and proof of the tick analogy is, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Um, the language here is suggesting some sort of parasite or tick. In fact, the entire world system of Babylon is a parasite, a foreign entity that is sucking the blood out of, of uh, what God made to be preserved. And anyone that signs on with it through sorcery, I'm not talking about because you participate in um, the war in Iraq or something. It's got nothing to do with it. Those who participate in the spiritual connection system are themselves parasites. And God has to destroy them because they're, they're not part of the kingdom of God. 
They're not sons and daughters of the Most High. They're not like, well, they worship Jesus on Sunday. They must know something. Uh, they claim to have a new mind. I mean, I saw this in the churches where I saw these people claiming to be so self-righteous. And yet they were just parasites. You know, waiting for lambs to come in. Lambs meaning they're unspotted by the world or separate or, you know, d disconnected or whatever. And they wait for those to come in and then they jump on them. They're desperate to feed. And they'll feed on every last living thing until there's nothing left and it just implodes. The, the reason Babylon falls, both in Jeremiah 51 and in, in Revelation 18, is because it falls of its own weight. Because it is a tick. It's a parasite. So it falls. And the whole system of government we have where they're sucking all the money out and they want taxes and they want this and that and they want to do this health care thing and then punish everybody and get everyone more and more ensconced in the system, that system is called slavery. And then they own you, you know? They want to get to they own every soul. So they're buying up souls in America and the idiots are running forth going, yay, I want health care. And they're, they're just, they don't understand because their eyes are closed and they cannot see that by their participation in this, this whole thing and the physical manifestation of laws and health care and this and that, all these, you know, communism, Marxism, all this stuff is just an outward manifestation of the already inward situation. Now, I can make a case that, you know, the entire thing is a joke, so therefore, you know, don't participate. And for many years I did that. I just said, you know, the whole thing is really irrelevant. And a lot of people I've known have basically rejected, say, America and the whole thing and just said, you know, it's all just an illusion. And the whole thing is based on these sorceries. And the whole thing is based on Satanism. And it's just everything else, it, it, the rest of the Disneyland illusion they give you is to make it look like it isn't that, but that's what it is. It's just trying to suck you in, get your soul, spit you out. Period. Therefore, be separate and, and wait on the Lord. And that's a very valid thing. Don't get your hands dirty. <clears throat> Don't, you know, abstain from, you know, wars, abstain from voting, abstain from doing anything. We're just going to wait and be there as vessels of the Lord and speak when he tells us to speak. And the, that, that's fine. And that all makes logical sense until the Lord says, well, wait a second. I'm involved in these wars. I'm involved in this political battle. I'm involved in the, um, the, the, the war on this and the war on that and the different and all the nations. And I'm involved. Is he gathering us to be in the wilderness and wait for the Jim Jones finale of the CIA and, and we can all commit suicide or all be like Wacode. Is, is, that what he, is that what this is? That they're just trying to gather, you know. Um, you got to look at it from, from their perspective. A gathering of lambs would be a very tempting target for a sacrifice for their power because they, they feed on that, and they're going to feed until they get every last innocent soul, and then they're going to, um, and then it all goes down. And, and then I suppose if Yahweh wants to do it again, he can do it again, you know, and we start off, um, you know, in, in this situation, what's so difficult for people is to understand that we begin with corruption. We begin already in the garden with the serpent, you know, and the, and the forbidden fruit. We begin already with Cain and Abel. We begin already with, you know, the devil tempting Jesus. We begin already with the notion of the world system of Babylon, which is the same in the Old and New Testament. Identical. In fact, you know, some of the language in Jeremiah, and, and, and even though it's, it's a translation from Greek and then Hebrew, the language or the metaphors that are used are, are very similar. And so, you know, basically describing what looks to me like a giant parasite. You know, once it sucks all the life out of everything, God smashes it. You know? And you have the same thing with um, you know, people that have crops and things. Because, yeah, Nazarena, she's got a mouse. You can hear that. 
I know you've got that, and you, and she won't let me have it because I would just kill it and throw it out there for the crows. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, so we finally get back to this point. Now, these perceptions and thoughts about the world and the notion that, uh, of the truth being that there are you know, many called and few chosen, and there, you know, there's God's witnesses. I really come have come to think that um, the people who are truly separate or born again or whatever, that the Lord is tapped to become sons and daughters of the Most High God and all that. Uh, I really believe, in a sense, these are also the two witnesses because uh, they will be endued with power to do to do miracles in the sight of men. And um, they will go through a similar um, upwelling of the spiritual gifts and spiritual powers. That, and they will be kind of untouchable at a time when there's maximum evil you know, upon the earth. And, um, you know, proving of God's existence. And then meanwhile, the, the people that are kind of separate from the whole thing are here as witnesses, right? Like the two witnesses, they're here as witnesses, of God's moving and God dealing with the world as it is. And so one must be separate in order to see what God is doing with respect to the world. That being said, I argued with someone yesterday about, you know, they're not going to vote, they're not going to do this, they're not going to do that. They're going to just be, they believe separation is physical, and so they're going to stand separate because it's all corrupt. And then I point out that we too are corrupt. Our flesh is corrupt. We too could easily devise a system like Babylon. I mean, what what's happened early on is that the the, the humans and the bloodline elites and all that that got involved were, um, you know, got intertwined with with certain spiritual entities that had power over the earth for this time, and signed on with that, and you know, eventually bred the civilization. And they were thinking that, you know, this is great. But it was done, as you can see, in her was found the blood of prophets, etc., and the saints. In other words, it's based on the blood of innocence. It's fabricated by the power of the blood of innocence. And that's why Satanists will sacrifice people, because, you know, they uh, even their own, uh, because they are trying to get more power to get control of the earth. But really, it's a parasitical thing because all this blood that is consumed and people and souls that are consumed um, can only power it so much. That's why, you know, you're, the war industry, the abortion industry, these are kind of like gimmies. In other words, that's a constant blood flow to keep their parasitical system going. And, you know, as I look at people like Bill Clinton, who seems to be like a clown and, you know, and the rest of them, and I, I see their days are numbered. And I see them going, you know, going to burning in the flames of hell. I see them, you know, being put out as parasites, you know, having become alien creatures, you know, having become a parasite that feeds upon the host uh, in exchange for looking like some sort of leader or looking like some sort of, um, you know, like somebody that actually has it together. And it's like, no, you don't have it together, you idiot. You are now part of the problem. You have done it the world's way, and basically they took your soul and turned you into, say, a vampire, and you're there feeding off the host. God won't allow that. And also, God will not allow any of those people feeding off the host into the kingdom of God. Period. It ends right here. There is no going to sleep in death and waking up in some kind of new life reincarnation. That's not what happens. That would be fine if you were God, but you're not God. And so, you know, the, and, you know, we can make up all the rules we like to suit ourselves, but God's law will be the supreme law of the land. Meaning if you don't submit to him and realize it's about him, not us, if you don't allow him through Jesus Christ to separate you from <clears throat> the situation and to get you clear because I mean a lot of you have been you know slept with a whore and you've done you've done the whole thing and you've been in the system all the way and um, only he can and those of you who are out only he can separate you and the way you can tell that if it's really worked is 
it's a change that occurs where you can't go back. Well, you can try to go back. For a lot of us, there is no nothing to go back to because it's not like the, the system ever was, um, you know, nice. The system is very hostile. Um, they want you to observe their, you know, they can tell, but if, if you know, you, you know, you don't get the cues, you don't understand, you don't speak the language, they just go, ah, there's one, let's get them, you know, it's, it's that simple, you know, um, and then you have the full force of uh, the evil one and the evil people on you, and then you, you find, you know, um, bakers and dentists and law enforcement officers and different people turning into demons, and it's like, wow. Because they don't have any control. They, you know, they, they're told that the secular world is just fine and that they're, you know, that they're fine. And, um, all of this leading me to talk about, you know, whether you participate in the system. I say this, really, if God leads you to, do something within the system, then by all means do it. We have a lot of people who are, um, you know, functioning uh, in the system, some that are not even awake. And they're kind of like Joseph in, Phar in Pharaoh's court. They're, they're doing their thing. And they can't change their stripes. They are what they are. I don't expect them to become, you know, numero uno, but they're there amongst them. The wheat and the tares growing together. We are in it, not of it, meaning we are in the world, but not of the world. Uh, those of you who are of God, you've never really been of the world. You've always had his stamp on you. Even before you became consciously aware of it and accepted it, you've always been different, the black sheep, not quite fitting in. You know, there's just something wrong with you. They couldn't control you. So, you know, you're a threat. You are, and you are threatening the big tick. You're threatening the parasite. Because there is nothing good in Babylon. When the Lord in Revelation is saying, come out of her, my people, and be separate, he's talking to the um, fallen churches and the religious system and the spiritual system. He means you need, he means this. Be washed in the blood of Jesus, get a new mind. It's no longer your life, but his life. It's not you who lives, but Christ. That transformation, okay, is the separation and justification um, uh, of your stature as being one of his, not one of theirs. And legally what that does is it, it kind of gets you off the hook in the one sense, but it also brings the wrath of the world in another sense. A lot of people say they're targeted individuals. Well, mainly because most of these are black sheep. In other words, they may not be aware of Jesus or the Bible or any of this or the truth of what's going on. They just know that for some reason, through no fault of their own and through no, you know, they, they being peaceful people, um, they're being targeted for, for no good reason and they're innocent people. Well, there's no innocent people. They're being targeted because the system sees they're not going to be of use. It even gets to the point where if you're not producing for the system the way that you could in terms of living to your potential, they'll come down on you for that. So it's um, not just the people that stand against it, who, by the way, without supernatural protection, you couldn't even exist right now because this tick would have eaten everything already. <laughs> it would have sucked all the blood out of everything and that would have been the end of it. So what causes it not to be successful in that way? I mean, they keep trying. The political process in America right now is just a perfect example. Communism, which is an outward manifestation of the Babylonian system of uh, totalitarianism and all that, coming in to try to get everyone to be dependent is, the, is basically the tick getting control and then sucking the life out of all these people by making them dependent. By, by You take their money, you take their stuff, and what they want in exchange is your obedience, you know, your vote, say for Obama, because he's, you know, he's the, the pimp daddy giving out all the uh, goodies. And they want in exchange for that your slavery. 
and you know people are willing to do it because they're just scared of, of not having and so they're going to jump on there thinking there's some sort of security with the government well the problem is spiritually what that represents spiritually what that represents is selling your soul to the devil period and then there's people that say but I'm on the dole because I got disabilities and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm all for people that, um, you know, if they can't pay for medical, if they need medical care or whatever and they, you know, they can't pay for it, it should be, you know, provided. Obviously, especially young people that, uh, you know, contract horrific diseases or major diseases or major medical uh, emergencies happen that should be covered if they don't have, you know, but it sort of was covered. The, the, the thing they're doing is they're using the healthcare thing um, in a spiritual way through sorcery to get control of all the souls. And, you know, the New World Order is the world of top down slavery <clears throat> um, and a um, lockdown uh, system. The problem with it is that when it gets to that point, God will end it. because it's not based on anything in reality. It's not based on the source of life. It's based on being a parasite and sucking life out of already created objects and things and people. So therefore, its, it's power source is human blood. So it can't, you know, like a tick. So it can't do anything except fail, ultimately. And the only provision we've been given to get out of this mess is through Jesus, it doesn't mean you're going to get a free ride. It doesn't mean you're not going to be persecuted. There's a guy that was having Bible study in Arizona, in Phoenix, who's in jail right now because he had Bible study and they didn't want him to, so they kept putting regulations there. And he said, well, I'm going to have people over. It's a private residence, and I have friends and family over, and we worship the Lord. And um, he had already been put in jail for um, worship of God in America. And the whole idea of uh, Obama with his, is really, a, he's a stealth Muslim, so his whole idea of bringing this Muslim caliphate in and bringing more and more Muslims in to take over is, again, to find, put the final quash on anything to do with Jesus and anything to do with, um, you know, so I've known people that said, oh, it's racist to say anything about Islam and all that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That's basically the hammer of the Antichrist. <laughs> you know, that's used to kill anybody um, that is not going to comply with the system. And these people are brutal. I mean, in the end, that's what the, they'll, they'll just haul people off. Citing the NDAA thing is just a matter of being able to pick up people that are not um, what they want people that are uh, against the system or whatever. They're, I mean, they right now they're looking for certain kinds of potential terrorists, but eventually that will widen into like this guy that's in jail or like pastors or people that are preaching the word, people that are having meetings, people that are standing against the NWO, the, that it will be an arm that can just pick people up indefinitely. And of course, all that is tremendously evil and wrong and the people doing it don't believe, they really don't believe they will ever get in trouble for it. Obama thinks he can just use his drones and go kill anybody he feels like or, you know, round them up. He's got he's tremendously drunk on power. And, um, you know, that he doesn't even have to have a good economy or anything else because people are too stupid to figure it out. And they're going to vote for him anyway. There's some 47, 48% of the people going to vote for Obama, which to me... All that means is that they are beguiled by sorcery and that they are um, completely mind-controlled and 100% um, victims of the New World Order and their souls are held in the bands. They're not free. Some guy tried to start telling me he was free in Christ and he was like, you know, he says he's a socialist, he loves Obama, but that he listens to my broadcasts and he likes my work and he's free in Christ. So he starts telling me that the socialist system of the world is really Jesus' teaching and I... I rejected him immediately because I realized he was a shell being used by them for infiltration purposes. He has nothing to do with the Lord, nothing to do with God, nothing to do with Yahweh. All of that's a lie. And the only thing he's being used for is to be that all-seeing eye spying upon people of the Lord, people of the faith.
in the end, the only tenable position, you know, spiritually, is separation and justification by the blood of Jesus Christ because that's the only legal measure that we have to be able to stand before God and be acquitted of the fallen, you know, nature of humanity, if you will. But first we have to recognize our own depravity, our own flesh, our own lack of ability, our own lack of righteousness, our own lack of purpose, our own inability to make things right, our own inability to govern ourselves, our own inability to, 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 to live in the truth. Knowing we need a shepherd to guide us that way. We have to come to terms with ourselves and really look at ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what, I really fall short. And even on my best day, I still don't get it. The people who have sown to the earth, who are, um, how shall I put it, believe that somehow the earth is the solution, all these people are going to die. And they do. Daily. And when they die, they will not get a free ride meaning sovereignty. They get, um, basically, it's kind of like the, the plant that didn't come up, you know, it's, it's cast in the fire. It's, it's, you know, we have the whole metaphor of the hell and the lake of fire and brimstone. But basically what we're talking about is the fact that the people are eternally cut off and most people before they die have had many chances and they've been ministered to by angels, by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, by all kinds of people and rejected it all the way through thinking Babylon was actually better. Babylon meaning a, a, a symbolic word to mean the world system. And they you know, weren't gonna give up their quote atheism and there's no atheist on this planet and there never have been. Atheism just means you're, you're down with the devil, period. It doesn't mean that you're this innocent atheist. There's no such thing as innocence on this planet. There are no innocent people. Um, you know, we have a, a certain period of time where we can admit it's not about us. That's like growing up, like a child has to learn it's not about him. The president has never learned that. It's of him, he says I more times than I and me, more times than any other person that's ever spoken publicly. And the people just sit there hypnotized by it and they go along with it. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I really didn't think people like Diane Sawyer were that was like the most retarded idiot on planet Earth or ever. Or people like Brian Williams or all these other people that just are shills for the NWO. And what they are is they're beguiled by sorcery. They're owned and operated by Satan. And they basically have no future. None. And you can tell by how they behave what their spiritual being and life is comprised of. It's not like, oh, have compassion. I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is unless it changes. I always, you know, allow for change. But the odds are in someone who is fabulously wealthy by the system who's become a propagandist shill for Obama, who represents pure evil. And you know the idea that these people, and they think he's the Antichrist, they actually secretly think that he is the one. And so they're, they're, they'll lie and do anything they have to do. A, journalism, a journalist lying, it's like a sacred honor not to lie. And they've all gone over that path. So they all sold their souls to the devil and they're all going that way. They have a very short time on earth if there's a nuclear holocaust coming up. If you read Jeremiah 51 and um, you know my reading of 18 and 51, it looks like something like that an hour. Hmm, an hour for total destruction. Well, a nuclear war wouldn't go much longer than an hour, would it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know, right now you can see all the pieces being moved into place. So this Obama guy is like, he's gonna preside over WW3 and you know, he likes the idea. I think he loves the idea of causing all that death and destruction at his uh, behest. And, um, you know, I just feel, I feel very sorry for him. I, you know, what a, what a um, horrible situation to be in. To have to, um, you know, all kinds of smiles and everyone likes, he's cool. 
Meanwhile, he has them in the crosshairs. All the people that support him, he's going to kill them all, you know, if, if he can get away with it. I mean, I'm not saying that he'll be able to pull off World War III or whatever. Um, you know, guys like Vladimir Putin look at Obama as a potential because he's so incompetent that he might cause it just due to incompetence. And then you could say, okay, but this must be the Lord's plan of bringing about some kind of resolution uh, to the evil of Babylon and to all the souls that have been hurt. Will there be justice in the end? I do believe there will be. What do you want to do on the meantime? It's not for me. I'm not going to sit there like I need vengeance on people. I don't. But if, if you know, being in Christ, it's almost like we see ourselves as having easily could have been any one of them doing bad things to others. Or like when Wormbrand was in jail, you know, the guards are killing people and they're torturing people and, you know, they're killing people and all that. And then guard comes to Christ and all of a sudden they're welcomed as a family member. You know, they're, you got to, you, you leave room for that. But at this point, you know, looking at it in a static way, like where people are today at this moment, a snapshot in time, you can see that, that the entire journalist world has gone over for this Obama guy who's arguably the most incompetent or possibly directed on purpose, shill, robot, whatever, that we've ever seen. But whatever the case is, because I, you know, I don't know the guy, whatever the case is, um, he has been a warmonger and Code Pink and all the people that get all upset when... Uh, uh, someone from the from the right, let's say, has gone to war. Uh, <laughs> all that is um, out the window. Obama can go ahead and have his wars, and there's no criticism. There's no code pink. There's, no, there's nothing. So this double standard shows me a com that these people are sold out to, to the devil. They sold their souls. And there is no more journalism, and there never really was. Maybe there was a long time ago, but there never really was. You know, journalism is, is, is blatantly propagandist. And, and I, you know, I just wonder if a guy like Brian Williams or what's her name or this other guy or these other people, if they even know what they look like in real reality. And a lot of these people, they, they read the Bible and they'll quote scripture and you had Janet Napolitano reading from Scripture with the the uh, um, with the deaths of people that uh, in Tucson, Arizona, when the guy went nuts with a gun, and um, they were all quoting. You know, she I think she was quoting from Isaiah of all things, and uh, they're reading Scripture. I'm like, what in the world is she reading Scripture for? That is bizarre, since I, she looks like she hates it. But then they'll take it and try to twist it into something they want it to mean. Obama was using it at one point to say, be still and know that I am God, meaning that he is God, you know, trying to get that adoration. And so you watch these people, unfit to even run a hot dog stand, sitting there in charge of the nuclear trigger and in charge of all these people's lives. And I just feel sorry for everybody. I really do. Um... The advantage I have is to see things from a different perspective, meaning from outside of this paradigm, you know, like looking in on it. And as I look in on it, um, you know, the Bible becomes just very clear uh, that there is nothing, nothing good about the Babylon system. Absolutely nothing. And uh, like this shill I ran into, he was saying, well, socialism saved a lot of people. And I'm like, you just said you were a believer in Jesus. Now it's socialism that saves. Okay. I didn't have time to argue with him. He was just there as a shill. He has absolutely no connection to God whatsoever and never has. And is, is just being used... Um, to try to talk to people like me or others and, and you know, explain to us the, 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 how great the world is and how great the world of socialism. At one point he said, well, you're outnumbered. The socialists are going to take over. I said, well, I'm basically a free market guy. I believe in freedom. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the, 
the good things about the U.S. because God showed me there were good things here. And he did not show me that the United States was Babylon, but rather the system that the United States happens to be a part of and is reflected in the architecture of Washington, D.C. and in the, uh, you know, and Albert Pike's books and various things to show what it's all about. And because most everyone there is in is Masonic. And um, to show their what they have in mind, you know, and, uh, you know, that the secret society is special interest and, you know, and all that stuff. And, and you know, you had the Bohemian Club in San Francisco and you had... Uh, you know, these different business associations and all that. But all these were born out of secret societies of, of ancient times. And the traditions go way back. And they've had this goal for hundreds and thousands of years to have a one world under Lucifer system. What they don't realize is that the goal of Lucifer is destruction of all humanity. It's not waking up and, and you know, it's not having a third eye. It's not having the capacity to reason or to do well in academics or whatever or to jump through hoops better, or to have superpowers so you can be an athlete. It's got, or a rock star, or an actor, or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it is across the spectrum. The whole point is the destruction of humanity and the rise, I believe, and this is where I think the Matrix films were so brilliant, is, is the rise of machines, ultimately, of clones and then machines. In other words, the death of humanity and then the replacement of, say, aliens... Right and machines like artificial or machine type ticks and parasites to basically run the show using humanity as the host then graduating to um, nano machines or whatever it is they want to do where they can download their consciousness into a machine that will not wear out and they can go on having beaten death through their own technology something like that which to me, also harkens in the uh, Terminator movies, you know, that, that in the future there will be machines that run everything. I, I don't believe we are in the future. I think we are in the past and that there is actually a future and time travel and all those things going on. And basically what it shows me is that when you see the typical alien being and the UFOs and stuff, you're looking at what ends up happening to humanity. Should they get their way? And some of them do. A lot of these what you are hybrids of human DNA and robotic technology and nanotechnology and they wind up looking like these emaciated aliens who are just simply robots that do what they're told. Have you noticed that? Um, certainly not E.T. Now, what's the reason for all these people running this way if you know that's what's going to happen if they give in and the system is main, mainly just beguiling people into it more and more. Come on in, it's fine. We'll take care of you. Come on in. We'll, you know, we'll you know, give us your allegiance. And even in the healthcare bill, Trish is pointing this out. She believes there's a, a, a and other people have pointed out. And I haven't seen it myself, so I, uh, I'll have to see it myself before I can really verify. It. But there's a. Um, you know, there's some kind of language in there about being chipped. So these people are not, I mean, what are they? They're Luciferians. What is Obama? He's a Satanist Luciferian. Obviously, they all are. And they, they're wanting to bring forth prophetic uh, scripture, and they want to wrap it up and have this be that time. The only difference is they want to beat God, and they, don't, they want Armageddon to go their way. They don't believe there's going to be some kind of end. Um, then you have everyone else thinking, ah, Christianity, you know, the Bible, this big end time thing. You know, they've always felt there was an end time. And, you know, is this really that time? And, you know, uh, I really can't believe it. And, you know, we'll be here 100 years from now and, and, and uh, you know, all that. And I can say that, the tra well, the trajectory we're on right now, there'll be nothing here 100 years from now. Unless there's a, a big intervention. And... Yes, they hate God. They don't want his rules. They don't want someone in charge of them. They don't want to be slaves or sold out to, a, um, you know, where they have no power. They don't want to bow down and commit. They don't want to be of the Lord. 
Now, here's the thing about me, what I've noticed about me, just, just you know, not special, being special or different than anyone else, but my experience has been that they just automatically sense what you are, which means to me, and my observation is, that there's some signature in me or something in me, not of this world, that is, that they, they you know, they're, they're, they're repulsed by. It's not something I can control. It's there whether I want to believe it or not. It's not one of these things where they recognize their own, each other, that there's something else in the people of God, you know, that for whatever reason are chosen. Certainly I never merited it. But I am what I am. And I've always been what I am. And it's, I've always had this, there's always been this thing going on. And I think that I'm, Basically, you know, um, my own signature and my own kind of spirit is like a spirit of the end. You know, I mean, my, my entire appearance on earth at this time and whatever, you know, all has to do with sort of the end and with the whole angelic realm and with this, you know, with uh, these, these. But I've cautioned people to, to try, not try to time it. And, you know... Uh, Humanity would have ended a long time ago had there been no intervention on the other side. So God has his plan. And it's going forth beautifully. And nothing they can do can stop it. But they will be allowed to bring forth their um, slavery, their totalitarianism, their tribunals, whatever it is they're going to do. And uh, Christians have always been, you know, having fantasies and, and, you know, dreams and, you know, even visions of a time where they're simply because of what and who they are, having bothered no one, being innocent people, innocent, made innocent by the blood of Jesus, but, you know, not being harmful to other people, not being, you know, not, not being combative, not being, um, you know, not hating people that do evil things. You know, they're just there as witnesses and saints, you know, doing the Lord's work. And that these people are, are killed if they don't take the mark or killed if they, they don't um, agree to, to, to bow down. And I find that all to be... Um, there's a lot of people that just reject the whole paradigm of Satan and God and the, you know, the whole battle between the two and the whole thing going on on Earth. And they look at it, they don't want to frame it in that. They think that's religio framing anthropocentric and that religio framing is something of a mind control meme it's a cultural implant it's got nothing to do with what's really going on so they look for a more uh, um, agreeable uh, paradigm to explain it but it, it, the best they can do is come up with say something like the matrix movie which almost parallels the bible and, and everything that's being talked about you know, in other words, we're, we're sort of locked in, we kind of innately know that we are, first of all, not living in time, in the right position in time. We know that there is some horrible thing that can happen. We know that we have to make a decision one way or the other because the world demands it. And we know that, um, that there are consequences for not agreeing to love death, meaning to love them that want to invite you in and then becoming one of them, uh, which means you're in love with death. And if you don't want to be in love with death, or if you just feel, or you're just different, you know, you're just not initiatable into whatever they're into. Uh, you're just, then, then I would say you're here having a purpose or a signature of God on you uh, for a purpose. I don't think through an act of will they can right themselves. I don't think they can have a conscience one day and go, gee, I really need to, you know, maybe some of them. But I, I don't see an en masse, uh, gee, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Lord, God, you're the one, and uh, it's about you, not us, and guide us, please. I don't see that happening. I don't see a mass repentance, and I don't see... Um, people uh, anytime soon, especially now, I think there's so much pressure um, and ostracization of having God. Is I mean, look at even this Tebow guy. Look what he's gone through. Look at the uh, harassment he's gone through 
because he's going to be open with his faith. He's going to pray openly. He's going to he's going to wear it on his sleeve, which I uh, applaud. And and it's kind of like, uh, you know, then then he's he's subject to tremendous ostracization, and um, I mean that's one level. See, there's a subtler level to it where you can just be someone like you, someone like me, and you know it's louder than Tebow, even though you're not doing anything. You're just standing there and all the walls start crumbling and it's like, what? Because those walls were not were built on false pretenses. Everyone must be false in order to keep the wall there. If there's someone that's, you know, truth and they short circuit the thing and everything, everyone starts going haywire. And what are we helping? We're helping the death and destruction of humanity in exchange for our own little pile of trinkets, period. The solution is Jesus Christ and being washed by the blood of Christ, being born again. If you're twice born, you have eyes to see all this. So I have eyes to see, and, you know, I've had people really criticizing me for trying to beat back, um, trying to make people aware of the political situation, and, and, you know, they say, well, Romney is really the... um, He's really the Trojan horse. He's a horrible guy and all this. And I say, yeah, well, you know, I'm led to vote against Obama, whoever it is, whatever it is. I'm sorry it's such a, you know, maybe it's not an electrifying choice or maybe it's, they're all part of the system and there is no way out. But um, I just have to go as led. I can't, see, the problem with Christians is they want to they wanna automatically act like they're Yahweh. They know everything. And I have people coming and telling me that, you know, this, and they tell me that, and this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And all the stuff they've been saying over the years, nothing has happened, what they said would happen. So they, they're not going to vote because they're too smart. They figured out that not to participate in the system, and that means they're separate. That does not mean they're separate. And, you know, thinking what's Romney going to do based on his background, it's not necessarily true that he will um, do what you think he's going to do. He may not. No one knows, really. Did any think any, any, anyone think that Obama would be as bad as he's been, as awful as he's been, as blatant as he's been? I mean, he's, I've never seen anyone, I guess, Stalin? You know, I, I'd have to f- find somebody. And the people just seem to go along because they're completely demonized, hypnotized, and um, completely gone. And there is no waking up for them. So in the political realm, I see definitely the, the whole spiritual struggle. But is there any pure candidate? Is Ron Paul pure? Hell no. Doesn't he hate Israel? I mean, you know, I mean, it goes on from there. And isn't Israel just Rothschild? No. I mean, you know, Israel's like the United States, like everywhere else. The wheat and the tares grow together. The Lord showed me there were good things here, things worth fighting for. I don't want to see pussies, the Lord said. I don't want to see people that are, you know, justifying being on the sidelines and not getting their hands dirty in a political struggle because they're above it and beyond it and they know better than than God. I said, well, isn't God, you know, I don't care if they've gone to Bohemian Grove. I don't care. They can repent. They can be led. They can be um, manipulated. You don't think God can manipulate the pieces on the chessboard? He's the one doing it. So who among us can say, I guess we're getting to the meat of this thing now, finally. Who among us can say, uh, I know perfectly well what's going on. And therefore, I will do this and I will do that. I will basically drop out of the system and not participate because I know it's all corrupt. Both sides of the Hegelian dialectic. And therefore, I'm just going to get it as far away as I can. And the next, I got, there's people living in bunkers in Montana that have this mentality. You know what the Lord wants for you to live down there in a bunker under the ground with all your canned food and guns. The Lord will make a table for you in the midst of your enemies. Your enemy today could be your friend tomorrow. 
well, then we should go reach them with the gospel and not be involved in anything like, you know, institutions on the earth or the military that shouldn't even think about that. We should just be getting the gospel to people. That's what they need. Oh, and how effective have they been um, with their plaques? How effective have they been handing out tracts? Not that effective. How effective have they been when they um, are amongst them and something miraculous happens? You know, they, they can see that there's another way, that they've been very successful. Where are people that need to be healed? They're in the system, aren't they? Where's, where does it need the most healing? Uh, LA, Vegas, New York, Washington, Chicago, Miami. Oh, well, then there should be saints there. What are they going to do? Stand on the corner? No, they're going to work. They're going to be in politics. They're going to work here. They're going to work there. God's going to move them around. And he, he's going to have it so the wheat and tares grow together. He is, the Lord absolutely is not saying, come out of her, my people, and gather in the wilderness over here in Waco. Or where is it? Jonestown. And, and wait on the Lord. That is not the Lord. The wheat and the tares grow together, the good and the bad are together, the, the light and the dark are together, the Satanist and the saint are together. We're all locked in it together. It is my hope, my sincere hope, including Barack Obama and everyone else, that all these people could be, um, souls can be saved and uh, emancipate onto the kingdom and to greater joy and a greater peace and to a, a greater sense of purpose and, and, uh, and good feeling and, and sustenance and um, without fear to be basking in total love and joy that there's enough for, that people don't have to lord it over other people in order to, to feel, um, you know, that they exist or whatever it is. I hope that each one can be fulfilled in a sovereign way. The only way I know that can happen is to be connected totally to the Lord and then humanity sort of goes by like when you're on a train, you're looking out the window and the scenery goes by. That's kind of like humanity. You know, people come and go in your life and people, uh, you know, events come and go and things come and go. But the one solid thing is your relationship with Yahweh through Jesus. You can count on that regarding your infirmities, old age, sickness, death, war, famine, poverty, all kinds of things. You know, you've got that at the end of the day. And because um, all those things that I just mentioned, everyone's going to die. Everyone goes through pain and suffering. And um, so all we really have is that because people can't help you. I mean, they can help to comfort from time to time and they come and they go. But they're not permanent. So that, is from an outsider here, that's my perspective. When I look at the world in an abstract way, I absolutely have no feeling of like, you know, I'm angry, I want to end it. I don't have that, those kind of feelings. It's more like, um, if it's unsustainable, it will be, um, if, it's, if it's on the wrong track, it will be righted, you know. The Bible kind of anthropomorphizes God into a real personal kind of like vendetta thing in the book of Revelation. And I think a lot of that is, is storytelling. To be able to describe uh, events that are happening and put a purpose that people would understand. Justice needs to be done to the evildoers who have for thousands of years basked in the glory of this thing and, 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 and through bloodline um, crafting have crafted their leaders and the mighty men of the earth that the Bible talks about, even in, in the book of Revelation 18. Um, you know, we, these are the mighty men of the earth. They're crafted bloodline elites from ancient times. But they're on the wrong path. And it's not about the blood. It's not about your connection to the earth. It's not about your connection to humanity. That's ridiculous. The connection is, we all have the same connection in humanity, which is the, the creator. I don't need to do anything to be connected. I'm already connected. Oh, well, 
to be accepted by um, satanic society that you'd have to become a Satanist. I'm not interested, thanks. The church can't see this. They're going to they're gonna go down with the ship. They can't see this. I almost thought it's at times that the Christians will be the ones that are left behind <laughs> and that there'll be a mass awakening of other people, not Christians, in the end, who will go on with the Lord, who would, be, who would have previously been anti-Christ spirits and whatnot. I've thought, I had those thoughts. I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I, I hate to lay that on you, but I've, I've actually thought that. The problem with the Christian church is it's so self-righteous. And um, when I say self-righteous, I mean, you know, judging other people, thoughts, things, and saying things they just don't know for sure. And then taking the place of Yahweh and putting him in a box and, and saying this is what God means. And I mean, I do that when I interpret scripture, but I mean, ultimately, I got to back off and say, you know what, I got to let the Lord be the Lord. He's involved with politics. It, it, if it's going bad, like we're reaping what we sow right now, it goes to World War III and there's an October surprise. We never do get an election. It just becomes a nuclear holocaust or whatever. If that happens, um, so be it. It certainly looks like a possibility. I would be remiss if I were to tell you that, oh, everything's fine. No, we're in dangerous straits. Yeah, you know, the other thing I've you know I've known uh, you know I'm in touch with more multiples and more people that had uh, satanic ritual abuse and and um, were military uh, uh, victims of military uh, being involved in satanic ritual abuse to split people and to create ultimately super soldiers and things like that. So I've been kind of in touch with. People that have been through that and are, they're coming out, they're completely, they, they, um, they're multiples. They split into different things and they f switch all the time. But, uh, these people are like, it's hard to explain, but they're almost like super soldiers for the Lord. They're, they're like angels in human flesh. And because of what's happened to them, they were, separate from um, the time they were like three and four years old. They were separated because they were split and then they, you know, then, you know, the abuse stopped, let's say. They didn't make it. In other words, they, but the, what the abuse did is it kept them from the system. And then the abuse stopped, but they still had the memories of, you know, and these people will take a child and, you know, uh, you know split them and mind control them and put a gun in their hand and say, go kill the, there'll be a guy sitting there, go shoot him, just like in the Matt Damon movie. You know what I mean? You know, and, 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 and things like that. Yeah, that, that's what they do. Um, it's horrible. But the system is established. It's above the law. It's available. It's very widespread, the whole world. And um, it's... It's uh, beyond any horror movie you could even think of. And everyone who's an elite, now all the people that have, uh, all the merchants of the world and all, the, all the, the, the actors and the famous people and the whatnot and this and that, they've all slept with that. They've all know, they all know that's all true. They've seen it. The sad thing for them is they sort of fret and they go through life and they're, they, they die by, by the time they're 80 and 90 and whatnot and they, you know, and they don't tell a soul about the things they've seen and the things they've done. They didn't know it was that bad, but now that they know, they, they're so scared of it, they keep their mouths shut. And so then it festers like a tick, it just spreads like a disease. Yes, that sort of thing, Satanism, etc., is a disease. It's a parasitical disease that's feeding on the host for the purpose of the destruction of humanity and the um, transmogrification of it into another form that is, that is hideous. 
and they do, but all the people that are flying around the spaceships and um, going through interdimensional travel and time travel and all that, they are all consciously aware they're trying to beat Yahweh. <laughs> if you, yeah, no, they'll say they're secular atheists and, and that was all a fantasy, but at the end of the day, privately, if you were to speak with any of them, they'll go, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, they wouldn't care so much. They wouldn't, you know, do you think if it was a, like, any less of a deal, they would take a guy who's having Bible study at his house and throw him in jail in America? Friends and family, no big deal. Um, of course not. It's, it's, it's obvious to me that um, you know, there is a battle, and it, it's not my battle. You, you know, I'm here, like you, as a witness to it. And I witness it, but it's not my battle. I'm not battling Yahweh. I'm always saying, Lord, it's about you, not me. I don't even know what I am, or I don't even know really who I am, because who you are, when people say, I know who I am, it means, it means that um, you ha you're, know who you are compared to the group of humanity you're comparing yourself to. So through comparative analysis, you are this person. You have this rank, name, and serial number, or whatever. Uh, a child of God has the identity of a child of God, separate from the world, for the purpose of whatever God's purpose is, but then that's a mystery. So you go, well, who are you? It's like, well, I am in Christ. But what am I? Am I a person? Well, it's Christ in Christ, uh, ultimately the I am. Okay, so what am I? It's hard to actually put a finger on it because you're not able to compare it to the ranking file system of the world. Like I'm an accountant and I work here and I have these uh, degrees and these affiliations. That's who I am. Well, that's not who you are, an accountant. That's not who you are, a musician. That's not who you are, a doctor. You know, you're none of those things. Who are you really? I remember the song from The Who, Who Are You? I don't think The Who meant it in the way I'm talking about it. I think they meant it like, who are you? You know, who are you in the, in the comparison rank and file system of Babylon? Who are you? Oh, I'm this person, rank, name, serial. Here's who I am. And here are my credentials and degrees, okay? Oh, okay, I know who you are. I know who you are. Because I, you're in a system compared to others where some are above, some are below. I see your ranking right there. So you're cool because I know who you are. Here's my rank. Here's who I am. And here's who you are. Well, I don't think we're supposed to talk because I'm a much higher rank. <laughs> you're supposed to do what I tell you. But um, when they say who are you, that's what they mean. They don't mean who are you. You know, like, what is this? Because if you look at who you are, everyone would draw a blank. If you look within to find out who you are, do not compare yourselves to anyone else, not part of the system. Who are you? And are there other people here? Is there a world here? Or is it an illusion? And does it really even matter? The answer is, of course not. It doesn't matter. Who are you? I'm nobody. Ah, oh, you're just a loser. I'm a loser compared to you in your ranking system. What happens to people in the ranking system? They burn. Why? Because they have to come out in order to be alive. What happens if they stay there? They go down with the ship like the Titanic. Why do they stay there? They don't want to give up their status of being somebody. Who? Well, I'm this. Oh, cool. You're somebody. Ha, ha, ha. Come on in. Let's partay. Let, let me love you as one of us. We rule the world. Oh yeah, you're gonna die. You rule the world, and from where? From your sickbed? 
Oh, and what happened to that ranking system while it, when you got sick and old and people... Oh, you're nobody now, huh? There you go. Well, there you go. So I guess your system was all illusory. You're nobody. Welcome to the club. Some of us figured this out a long time ago. Usually the people that get bullied and hurt and harassed and just you know, misfits are different or the cost of being different, they, they tend to wake up early and they tend to figure this out. People coddled by the system, they don't, they don't wake a lot of them just never wake up. I'm reminded of Senator Byrd, Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, you know, Clinton defending him in a eulogy going, he had to do that because he couldn't, that he, he needed to get elected. <laughs> I had to join Satan because otherwise I couldn't get a job. So, you know, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Well, then why do you read from the Bible and act oh so holy? Well, because, well, why is that even part of the paradigm? Well, because it is. Yeah, but we, everyone spent all this time and money and education to diseducate people and say, it's not part of the paradigm. There, that It's like a paradigm thing. There's this whole God-devil thing. This is all so stupid and ancient. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's all random. Yeah. Uh, I think the most horrific kind of consciousness of all would be to have an idea that it's all random. I think that would be very hard to live with that. You'd have to really be super connected to all your friends and, you know, as uh, as the old song says, you can drink the night away and forget about everything. Um, no, there's no, I'm, I don't blame anyone for drinking or, you know, trying to push back the pain. I understand. Pain is severe. For the sensitive ones out there, the pain's very severe. And if you're really sensitive, they can't have you in the system because you're too sensitive. You wouldn't be able to accept all the trauma and all the things that happen uh, that people do to each other because you're sensitive. And if you're sensitive, that's too bad. You're just not going to make it. Well, usually if you're sensitive, I suppose... They could find a slot for you, like you could maybe be gay or something. I, I, I'm making a joke. I'm just, um, God, it's hard. It, it it's really hard to have the con the cognition of and the signature of truth, and then bear it alone. You you have to push into God, Christ, Jesus the one, and realize it's not about you. You have to get it off your shoulders. You know, you can't really, you know, don't want to carry the burden of it all. God's doing his thing. He's completely in control. I'm in him. I trust him completely. And he tells me, you know, and I have to go to him constantly throughout the day to figure out how to think about different things and people and how to proceed. Otherwise, I'd freak out. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord says, you know, a lot of times me will say, you know, I've got it handled. Go ahead and trust. Don't be suspicious of people or anything like that. Don't be going in your own understanding about their motives, their associations. You know, the, the, the people that need me the most are the people that have all kinds of degrees and things and affiliations and, and they're freaking out because nothing has worked out. And, you know, if the few of them are ripe to go, go talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Well, I couldn't talk to them if I was hanging out in Jonestown or Heaven's Gate or Waco or as any other, you know, separate breakaway group. Because, see, the reason I think those groups go down is because it's not really of the Lord. It's a man-driven thing. Their own lack of understanding that, okay, God can handle it. He can make a path for you through this world. They who are running the, the nation are, you have the same corruption in you that they have in them. So, you know, they made a decision to go to run with it. You didn't, but the fact is you both have the same nature, fallen. So you really can't get too harsh about it. And that's what makes us peaceful, because once we see that, we have peace because 
we realize that, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. And, you know, we're all capable of doing some really terrible, horrific things. And that stops you from doing the judgment, like, oh, they're evil, we need to, you know. It's not they're evil, it's that we are fighting against, you know, Ephesians 6, principalities and of, of wickedness in high places. We are fighting against um, not flesh and blood. We're fighting against the, the rulers of the darkness of the present age who are, who are in other dimensions, high places, other dimensions, who are working through the spiritual realm affecting people and trying to move pieces on the chessboard in a grand chess game against the creator of all things. With humanity caught in the balance, it's a hell of a thing. And most people don't believe that it is what I said it is. And they believe somehow that through their own wits, you know, there's a lot of good people out there who've just decided to kind of try to be decent and look the other way and try to get through, whistle by the graveyard, do it on their own. And it's like, nah, you can't do it. You need super, it's a supernatural realm and you need supernatural miraculous power on a daily basis just to get through. But am I worried about World War III? No. If God brings it, God brings it. If it happens, God brings it. So there's nothing I can do about it. Am I worried about um, anything really right now uh, you know, that Obama could be the Antichrist. Not really, because, you know, certainly um, they've groomed him for it. But, I mean, do I... It's kind of obvious to me. But do I feel like a need to go spend a lot of time lining it up? No, I think we look at Daniel 11, and, you know, you can look at Daniel 11, and you can look at Obama, and you can consider other scriptures. And, you know, but I think that's a, that's a waste of time. Because you're never going to have a definitive answer about anything. Because it's all, none of it really fits. Because you're dealing with fourth and higher dimensional realities fused in with this. So nothing really makes sense in time and place. And even if it were so, you know, we're still going to die. We're still going to get old and die. And, or we're going to die somehow, some way. We still have this sort of death sentence on our heads. So how can we live now in joy and peace despite all these things happening. Well, besides Christ, Christ in you, you believe in him. He sets us free. He walks us through truth. He opens our eyes to what the truth is. It's horrific, so we push further into him because the thing is horrific. And we try to do his will for our life each day. Some people may be off feeding the poor. Some people may be witnessing the people in prisons and hospitals. Other people may be... Um, you know, sharing the word. Other people may be doing other things. That having been said, does any of us have power over our separation or connection? No. God makes the people connected, separated, this and that. You can look at it this way. I am connected to the Lord but not really connected so much to the world. I'm kind of otherworldly, you know, in, a, in that sense. But I always have been that. And um, what occurs to people to be very important to some people is not important to me. And that's kind of how that happened. It's just, I just don't, you know, I like to see nice things and I certainly don't want people to suffer, but I don't want to believe in a system where if you don't join it, you, you know, that... The alternative to Satan would be poverty and, and uh, disease and all that. I just don't, I just can't buy that paradigm that they've bought themselves, that they had, in other words, I had to, he had to do that or, he, you know, he had to win an election, you know. So he had to become a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, otherwise he, he wouldn't be a senator. <laughs> in that one eulogy, he just summed the whole thing up, didn't he, Clinton? You gotta love that. There was no guile in him. He was just automatic about it. Well, of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a classic example of what they call the reprobate mind. It just can justify anything. <laughs> well, of course I had to do that or I wouldn't be able to, you know, make money. I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to do that. And the answer, you know, look, I'm not putting anybody down here. I understand 
people get scared. Look, it's presented to us when we're children. Fish or cut bait. You know, either join us or have your head handed to you. You know, basically, you know, there's this hard thing that's put before people. <clears throat> and so then they believe it. They think, well, I don't want to be like, you know, killed or hurt or, you know, I, I want to have, you know, a family and a home and friends and a career and all that. So I'm going to basically, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to fish. I want to be a part of things. So I guess if it's the satanic world, then well, hello, Satan, let's do it. When in Rome, baby. And that's what's brought all the, that's what's brought us to the brink of destruction, all the pain that we have. Too many people over the generations have said yes to that, and so now we have this. And that's what caused this. Had they stayed the course uh, with the Lord and his instruction, there wouldn't be anything like this. There wouldn't be a problem going forward. Irony of ironies, the United States has a Marxist uh, uh, Muslim in the, in the White House. Um, how did that happen uh, when we spent all this money fighting communism? Well, it could only happen if people abrogated their moral uh, compasses. If they gave up on the Lord, if they turned away and tried to do it their own way, then you, then you end up with things like that. It's reap what you sow, America. It's very simple. Obama is your reaping. You know, accept it. Now, for the people that love Obama and think he's great, what they don't understand is that they, the true believers, will be the first ones, you know, executed if it becomes a new world order communist totalitarian regime. Because they don't want true believers. What they want are, are Luciferians, you know, people that know the way the world works and are down with it. They don't care about fairness for people or feeding people with food stamps. That, that's, it's, that's not it at all. You know, they do this to manipulate the souls into position, but after that, it's just basically um, they want a world of them and their God, Lucifer, upon the earth and the elimination of Yahweh and anyone connected to Yahweh, ultimately, and uh, to be able to do their own thing and go off into the future as machines that don't die with their consciousness in place and be able to um, have freedom to move about and to do what they want. And they worked at this thousands of years. And, and I understand it. The, what they've worked for, though, in the end, is their own destruction. And they just don't seem to get it. They really feel committed to it. And there's nothing I can say here that would change their mind. The, the, you know, the idea is, well, I wouldn't have this school to send my kids to. I wouldn't have this house with the, um, you know, with four bedrooms. I wouldn't have this car. I wouldn't have these friends. I wouldn't, nothing would work unless I, you know, bow to the devil which means they automatically believe in God. If you believe in a devil, you have to believe in God. So they, then they say, no, we're all atheists. And it's like, ah, uh, well, once the lies get going, I guess they can tell themselves anything. At this point, when you see them, they're just mind control robots and they don't know anything about anything. I don't know, I just, you know, things are good, yeah. So, I hope we can beat it back. I would like to see the world wake up. It looks pretty difficult now, I have to admit, it looks pretty dark. And um, the enemy seems intent on, you know, they don't, you'll notice that no Muslim is really a problem. It's just, um, you know, Christians. You'll see that the enemy, they put people on the, on the terrorist list who are Christians. Yeah, these are the potential, and they're and they're um, they're not Middle Easterners. They're 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 white Americans, and and now increasingly black Americans who are uh, rejecting of Obama, let's say, because they have strong moral values or whatever that might cause some of them to wake up. You know, because he feels that since well, I'm black, I control you. You know, you're the, you're my bitch. Keep you in the ghetto. Make sure that you never get out of poverty by keeping you, you know, by throwing stuff up. It's, it's unreal. And I, I don't even want to go into that because it's a waste of my time. But um, there's plenty of people talking about that on television. 
Uh, it's horrible, you know. I'm sorry that we have to live uh, through this situation, but you know, Obama wants to, you know, he's relishing uh, living in the decline and seeing how people are in tremendous pain, and he's this is what he's lived for. He's he's uh, he felt for the longest time that you know um, the whole founding of America was false and that it shouldn't be. So he wants to assimilate it into a global community where he's a, you know he and his buddies are lording it over people. And eventually, you're going to see the rise of the psychiatrists where they're going to if you have the wrong thought. There's the whole precon. You know, oh, you're thinking the wrong. Th you have the wrong orientation, and they have to reorient you. And it doesn't stop there. It, it goes all the way to. Um, you know, to the end. It, it, there's no end to it. So, I've been um, rejected by people that don't want to see it. So I'm not even. I'm not even proposing anything. I'm not really even proposing that you drop everything or embrace everything. I'm not telling people to drop out of the system because I know. You know, what you're thinking of is the physical aspect of that, which has got nothing to do with what I've talked about for years. The system that I'm talking about is a spiritual system based on sorcery and witchcraft. And the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the connection to it uh, brings you into the family. And then you get to say, I am somebody. And this is the, uh, what they, you know, nod and wink and say, this is the death, but this is the giver of life. And I'm here to say, no, that's ultimately the second death. And so the warning is, You know, and for people that really, this is it for them, I guess that's fine. You know, this, this, this um, uh, situation in 3D, is this, that's all they're ever going to see. They're not going to go on and see anything else. This is it. They've said this is enough and uh, they don't mind, you know, and then, and then it's all fleeting because they, their glory days are over and now they're getting old and then they're going to die. And so sort of like, eh, so did, you know, hello, did you ever live? Did you ever, no, nope. gave up when I was 16 and I worked my whole life and, you know, my children and my grandchildren are going to live on and that's fine with me and I'll die on cue, man, thank you. There's a lot that are just like that's as far as it goes. I did whatever I had to do to get elected. I mean, to make my, I mean, to be part, to be somebody, to be, who are you? To be ranked and I did, you know took my place in the uh, paradigm and did the best I could and I got no regrets. Thanks. No, I'm not looking for God or religion. Thanks a lot. See ya. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. I guess it's all about you. Oh, well. Um... So people are oriented that way and they build their social networks based on self-interest and uh, narcissism and they believe they're really talking to other people when they're really talking to aspects of themselves. It's one big room full of mirrors. They think they smashed the mirror and now they're on the other side but what really happened is they got a new set of mirrors and the mirror is that everyone they talk to and everyone that's reflected is another aspect of them. So they feel very comfortable and they're not challenged. Because if you see someone else reflecting back to you and there's another point of view or another thing happening, so you're not, you're not being coddled by your own narcissism, um, then it's very threatening. It means, oh my God, everything I thought was wrong. Everything I thought about the world was wrong. Um, I can't live through my children and grandchildren. i got to find out how I can live. Because it looks like I'm just going to go down with the Titanic. Uh, God bless people who are feeling like that and who will find the Lord who will seek answers because answers can be found. But that's a rare thing. Most of the fighting, you know, and riots and discontent that you see out there is over entitlements and 
the economy going down and people eventually, you know, I, they may want to bring about a World War Three, if nothing else, just to, to avoid that reality and just to have a, you know, just hit the reset button. Um, I don't know what else I can say. You know, I love the statement, it is what it is. Deal with it. It is what it is. So I didn't make it this way. I didn't make the rules. You know, just to say that there are no rules because you don't like them um, doesn't in any way diminish the fact that there are rules, whether you like to say there are or not. There is a God, whether you say, say there is or not. There is a pattern here and a, uh, a way that, that leads a, a person to life, and there's a way that leads to death, whether you like it or not. There is um, Lucifer, Satan, if you like, uh, principalities of, of uh, wickedness that have control over humanity, whether you like it or not. And there is Jesus, who is not just a myth, who is not a, um, uh, you know, who is Yeshua, meaning God saves, who is there um, as a savior for people that want to go, you know, who want to live. But, you know, Lucifer set up the churches so that he could, you know, get people in for Jesus and switch them out to Satan all the same. And um, I don't know why they worship the devil in churches. It kind of has a poetic sense to it. Why they demand that people conform to Satan in order to then say they're uh, members of the church, I don't know. You know, usually they focus on the youth and the youth groups, and then when there's people that are kind of misfits, they tag them and send them off to the shrink. You know, I, I don't know. I, I Really, I don't know. I, I don't understand why. Um, do people think that they're not seen? Do they think that there's any act of evil that isn't seen? Do they actually believe they're going to get a free pass on this? Do they believe there are no consequences, consequences to actions? They believe they do not reap what they sow. The law of karma, the law of the golden rule. I don't know. I don't know. But the only way I can really live, the only way I can be somebody is to be somebody in Christ. But then the irony of that is, it's not me, it's him. But that's okay with me because, you know, uh, it wasn't me anyway. No, I don't want to be somebody. I don't want to be an answer to who are you. And the reason I don't is because basically that's, you are somebody based on a delusion. You're, you're really, this, you know, you, you have an ego, you have a sense of separate self, but ultimately we are nothing. You know, we are dust. Ultimately we are only something in the I am, but then it's not about us anymore. So in a sense that you die to self and you live, but not you, but Christ who lives within you. To me, that's very, very fine. I don't want it to be about me. You know, say you're a hero. How many heroes could keep up that hero stuff? Oh, they have their glory days and then it's over. And then it's nothing but regrets. And you hear they got busted on drugs, they did this, it's a mess. You can't be God. And you can't live in the glory day forever. And everybody knows, um, you know, and tries to blame the other guy for the sinking of the ship, but ultimately, we would have been sunk a long time ago if it weren't for the intervention of love and the, and the generosity and the mercy uh, and the glory of the, and the power of the Lord. Without that, we would have already been lost. So it's a blessing, 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 blessing. And those who know him are triply blessed because they have a place to go rather than trying to work it out with their fellow man, which is an illusion because there really are no fellow men. You know, there's the illusion that you have, but then when they're gone and you're sitting there years later, you can really make a case that that didn't happen. It was a dream. Yeah, I can make a case that, that all this is waking up from the, those who will wake up or those who accept the Lord. Yeah, that's that Christian ethos and that's the anthropocentric Christian kind of 
mean Yahweh paradigm Bible thing. You know, I don't even think like that. Yeah, but you know, you still have a choice. You still, the world is still going to come after you for your allegiance to something that you say you don't believe in. You don't believe in that paradigm, but the world uh, that comes after you to be a part of it um, presents itself in such a way that you know that's what it is, but you can say, oh, I reject that paradigm, but you already are part of it. And so that's disingenuous because you've already accepted the paradigm and then you say it doesn't exist, but you have to say that because you're being told to say, like the devil doesn't exist. You know, you're told to say that so that people, um, to obscure the whole thing so that people don't really wake up. My feeling about it is God will out in the end, you know, and but he already is right now. That his workings are, are throughout everything. Politics, sports, music, religion, science, everything. Nothing is separate from him, even though he's not exactly visible in the sense of the people like to say visible. Nothing would be here without him. Nothing. There wouldn't be any to argue about. So there is no way to get rid of the source without getting rid of yourselves. Hence, what's Lucifer's job? To get rid of yourselves. Why does he want to do that? Because he's at war with God. You know, I'm simple. And because humanity is the thing God's dealing with and, and you know, the angelic realm of, of that fallen angels is completely um, miffed. So there's a war. And that's all I can say for now. With that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you and praying for you. Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report. We'll see you next time.